Hello students, I welcome you all to quick solutions of AIATS2 code E and F for RM batch which was held on 17th of November 2019 and I shall be dealing with the zoology part. So let's begin students. Question number 136. Total volume of air that a person can expire after normal inspiration is Option number 1, expiratory reserve volume. Option number 2, expiratory capacity. Option number 3, residual volume. And option number 4, functional residual capacity. Students, here we have a diagram depicting the various respiratory volumes and capacities. So, let us see. The volume of air that a person expires in a normal breath is tidal volume and the volume of air that a person can forcefully expire is expiratory reserve volume therefore the total amount of air that a person can expire is tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume let us see here in the diagram the tidal volume plus the expiratory reserve volume so, the tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume makes up the expiratory capacity. Now, let us look at the options once again. Expiratory reserve volume is incorrect because it does not tell us the total volume. Expiratory capacity is correct because it comprises tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume. Residual volume is incorrect because residual volume is the amount of air that remains in lungs even after forceful expiration. Option number 4 which is functional residual capacity is also incorrect as functional residual capacity comprises the residual volume and the expiratory reserve volume. Therefore, the answer becomes option number 2 that is expiratory capacity. Let us move on to the next question. Question number 137. Select the correct statement. Let us read the statements. Number 1. The binding of carbon dioxide to hemoglobin is related to partial pressures of carbon dioxide as well as oxygen. Hemoglobin can bind with carbon dioxide as well as oxygen. In the alveoli, it binds with oxygen whereas in tissues, it binds with carbon dioxide. Therefore, depending upon the partial pressure of the gas, hemoglobin can bind to oxygen as well as carbon dioxide. So, this statement is correct. Number 2. Carbonic anhydrase is present in highest quantity in blood plasma. This statement is incorrect as carbonic anhydrase is present in highest quantity within the RBC where carbon dioxide combines with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid which in turn is broken down by carbonic anhydrase into H plus plus bicarbonate ions. So, this reaction takes place in the RBC. Therefore, its concentration is maximum in RBC. Number 3. Carbon dioxide is transported as carboxyhemoglobin in blood. This is also incorrect as carbon dioxide is transported as carbaminohemoglobin when it combines with hemoglobin and carboxyhemoglobin is formed when carbon monoxide combines with hemoglobin. Number 4. Dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin is favored by high pH at the tissue site. This statement is also incorrect as dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin is favored by low pH which occurs at tissue site because of the presence of carbon dioxide formed as a result of metabolism. Therefore, the correct statement out of the four statements is statement number 1. So, the correct answer becomes option number 1. 
Let us see the next question, students. Question number 138. The total amount of carbon dioxide transported through blood plasma in ionic and dissolved state is. The question asks us the total amount of carbon dioxide. Here we have a table which depicts the transport of carbon dioxide. Let us see. In dissolved form through plasma, about 7% of carbon dioxide is transported. As bicarbonate ions, about 70% is transported. And as carbaminohemoglobin, that is in association with hemoglobin, about 20 to 25% carbon dioxide is transported. So the total amount that is transported in plasma becomes 7 plus 70, which equals 77%. So, the correct answer becomes option number 4 that is 77%. Let us see question number 139 students. Which of the following is true with respect to inspiration? Option number 1. Inspiration requires intrapulmonary pressure to be higher than atmospheric pressure. This statement is incorrect because if the intrapulmonary pressure will be higher than atmospheric pressure, expiration will occur and not inspiration. Option number 2. Contraction of diaphragm increases the volume of thoracic chamber in anterior-posterior axis. This statement is correct because as we can see here in the diagram that diaphragm is dome shaped when it is relaxed. When it will contract, the diaphragm will flatten which will increase the volume of the lungs in anterior posterior axis. Option number 3. Contraction of internal intercostal muscles lifts up the ribs and sternum. This option is also incorrect because the contraction of external intercostal muscles will lift the ribs and sternum and bring about inspiration. Option number 4. Contraction of external intercostal muscles increases the intrapulmonary pressure. This statement is also incorrect because when the external intercostal muscles will contract, it is going to reduce the intrapulmonary pressure which will lead to inspiration. So, the correct option over here is option number 2. So, the answer becomes option number 2. Let us see the next question students. Question number 140. During swallowing, entry of food into larynx is prevented by a thin elastic cartilaginous flap called. Options are option number 1 glottis, number 2 gullet, number 3 epiglottis and number 4 uvula. So, glottis is the initial part of the larynx which is covered by a cartilaginous flap called epiglottis. Number 2 gullet, this is the opening of the, the gullet. is the opening of the esophagus and uvula uvula is a projection from the soft palate which closes the internal nares during swallowing so that passage of food into the internal nares prevented we can see here that the epiglottis covers the glottis. This over here is the esophagus. So, while swallowing, the food should not enter into the respiratory tract. It should directly go to the esophagus. Therefore, this epiglottis is the cartilaginous flap which covers the glottis. So, the answer becomes option number 3. Let us see the next question students. 